Muy buenas tardes a todos. Bienvenidos a esta sesión, penúltima sesión del segundo a la Virtual Flute Workshop. En esta ocasión nos encontramos, eh, tenemos como artista invitada a la doctora Brittany Totter. Eh, la doctora Brittany Totter es una flautista profesional, eh, una artista que enseña y vive en Pittsburgh. Eh, según su biografía dice que su pasión envuelve enseñar jóvenes flautistas y contribuir al crecimiento cultural eh, para generar un mejor, eh, una mejor región de Pittsburgh eh, en la interpretación musical. Eh, la maestra Brittany Totter, la doctora Brittany Totter, eh, ayuda a que los estudiantes exploren y mastericen nuevas técnicas eh, enseña, da masterclasses, eh, da clases de música en general para eh, flautistas que están iniciando, como todos los otros tipos de, de flautistas más avanzados. Uh, y actualmente, eh, la doctora Brittany Totter eh, acaba de iniciar, de unirse con el Conservatorio de Música de la Universidad del Pacífico como profesor asistente en la práctica de flauta, eso es un gran logro para su carrera. Su disertación <coughs> se titula Examinando la, el híbrido musical y las, cultu las influencias culturales eh, de la sonatina de Valerie Cosmans, el deseo de Valerie Cosmans en la sonatina Infant y Men. Entonces, pues, básicamente, acá tenemos un, una pequeña uh, biografía actualizada de la doctora Brittany Totter, y es un honor para nosotros tenerla ella acá con nosotros. Entonces, um, démosle la bienvenida a nuestra primera participante, la, la doctora Brittany Totter. Hi, Brittany, how are you? I'm doing well. Hi, everyone. Uh, it is an honor to have you here. Um, we, I, I'm going to be working for you as a translator. Uh, the first student is Daisy Montaño. Uh, Daisy. ¿Estás por acá? Hola, Daisy. El escenario. Hola, el escenario es... eh, Tú hablas inglés, ¿cierto? Más o menos. O sea, no, no tanto. Bueno, yo estoy acá pendiente de cualquier cosa. ¿Listo? Bueno. bueno. So, the stage is yours. All yours. Can you please um, introduce yourself in the piece before you play for me? Uh, I am Daisy and I am going to play Carmen.
well done. A fantastic plane. Your technique is quite well. And so what I think we're putting you on the next level is if we talk about some musicality things. I want you to express more of your own operatic voice because this is essentially <laughs> a theme <laughs> on, on opera, right? And so I think we can think of three things. So first, I want to work with you on the transitions between the different themes and variations that we have. And then second, work on that operatic voice, especially in the harbinger. And then we can talk about some practice tips about the 16th notes, right? Because those can be just like a bugger, right? <laughs> <laughs> so first, let's go back to the beginning. And let's talk about the operatic voice there. You have such a nice tone, but I think we can be just a little bit deeper in our production to it. So can I just hear a B natural, a B, and really think that you are getting that note from the bottom, like the note is coming from your legs all the way out of your mouth. So can I just... The B natural, just hold that for me. Yeah, so just the B natural. Nice. So your vibrato is very nice and simmering, but I don't think that that is the type of tone color that we need now because it's more of like a pastoral, like a nice you're slowly waking up in the morning. You're not like, oh, here I am, right? You're like a slow transition in the morning. So you want that in your vibrato. So a nice little slow. So if you're thinking of your vibrato in um, rhythms, we don't want a 16th note. We want like more of like an eighth note. And then that B natural is going to grow into that G sharp. And you see here it just blossom from like maybe a dark orange to a nice light orange as it blossom up. Let me hear those two notes. Nice, and let that vibrato prepare you to it. So we had a... So go into the valley of the vibrato to let it blossom. Let's try it again. Yes! How did that feel? Much more relaxed, right? We're not just like, oh my God, I have to play this solo. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Y cómo te sientes, Daisy? Pues, yeah, uh, good, good. Uh, it's, it's very cool, the class. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about, and let me see if I can share my screen. What, what? Can you repeat, please? Oh, I'm going to share my screen. So <laughs> let's... <laughs> Let's go here and let me undo that. And here you do such a nice accent, but I think it's just a little bit too whack-a-mole sound, like too harsh. I want you to think more about those accents coming from here. So can you take your finger? And this is a nice exercise that I use when I do um, accented notes. So take your hand and put it right above um, your chest, where your rib cage meet, like this. And then I want you to say the word ha. <laughs> you try? Ha. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel this muscle move right here? Mm. Ha. Mm -mm. You might need to go up more with your hand. I think you're too low. Come up. Ha. Do you feel it now? Yes, yes. Yes. So what you're feeling there is your intercostals and excostal muscles. And those are important as we energize the air into the flute. 
So as you are using that, huh, huh, I want you to just do it with just, I call this the hug. A lot of other people call breath impulse, but what you're gonna do is play um, those notes right here, this line, without the tongue. So you're just doing with just the ear. That's the air. Very well done. And now add the tongue, but keep that same intensity with the air and using those intercostal muscles. So that have that nice open sound. And now you can take your time there. So pretend that you are an opera singer. You're not going to go, ha oh, he ha 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 ha. No, you're going to add some, like, stretch some notes and then rust some notes. So let's just for that. You can go. So you can have that nice quietness to the G. I felt that it was too rhythmic. Take it out of time. So this is over exaggerating. You might not want to do this, but over exaggerate. This really da di da di da 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 di da di da da. So use that stretch. Stretch the time there. Let's try it again. Nice, and really pull back the sound. Whenever I have that figure, I'm thinking that the sound is behind me, so I can be that quiet. So can I hear that again? And pull that G behind you with the sound. Yes. And then you're going, as you're playing it with an accompaniment or with an orchestra, you're going to hold that note and then give that downbeat there on the allegro. So that's always um, one thing, especially with any solo that I play, I always practice the cues. So when I'm with the piano or the orchestra, <laughs> it's a habit, right? <laughs> and then when we get into the allegro and just get into um, practice tricks, especially for those 16th notes, really think of it in two. So um, with my metronome, and I'm going to take it really slow, maybe like 40. This is 46. So I'm going to beat only in the half note. So we have... So I can have that nice flow to it. For me, it sounds too much as it sounds too much in four. And you want to think of this in two. So do you have a metronome with you by chance? Or maybe just tap your foot and just think of that um, half note. Let me hear you. Just the first two measures of the Allegra. <laughs> And now, think more, make the first beat and the third beat lean into that a little bit more. So I'm going to over-exaggerate. You hear how I'm leaning into those certain beats and everything else is weak. Did it feel more relaxed and not like, oh my God, there are so many notes. <laughs> right? And you can do that for all of the other 16th notes. A harder thing to do is think of it in one. 
So that is called um, displacing the beat. And I would recommend doing that as you're practicing the this technical part because it can get kind of monotonous and you're kind of like, Ugh, I don't feel like doing it, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. And then let's look at this transition here. Now, I would like for you to take more of your time here. So we have. You see how I slow down? I added a retard around here. I can okay. Add. Yeah. So add a retard around here and then take your time and even start to trill slower and then speed up to the trill. So can I just hear? Here. Very well. So what I'm hearing is you're using a lot of um, singers who call this their head voice, and I want to use more of your chest voice, especially, um, let me see if I can change the color here. Or maybe not. Especially here. On these notes. There. Here, here, and here. So you want those to be deeper. What I'm hearing is two highs. You hear how that's a different tone quality because I'm reaching up, but I need to sink lower in those notes. Can you just play just the downbeats of those? Just play the downbeats of each of those figurations for me so you can really sink through. Mm. Warmer air. I'm hearing that your air is a little bit too cold. That's cold air. I want more warm air. You hear how the warm air have more of like a delf in the sound? So think more warm air. Let's try it again. Yes. And as you're playing those downbeats, be careful. I know it's a big thing about flute players. We always want to decrescendo the end of our note, but don't decrescendo those there because you can decrescendo when we get into the trip, the 16th ones right here at the bottom. So make those downbeat a little bit fuller. You hear how the downbeats are more prominent and then the other ones are just like, eh. Not so important. Okay, let's try that figuration again. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, and you want to sink into that E because you don't want to go too sharp on the E. One other thing is I notice is whenever you are slurring, um, this portion, the da di da da, I feel like you're stopping the air. It's not a true slur. I'm hearing, and this is an over exaggeration. You hear how there's a stop in the air? Whereas there's not a stop in the air. The air is continuing. So, can you just do this? this measure right here and pay attention to that to see if you're stopping the air as the air is continuing. So I'm still hearing it. I'm hearing, you hear how there's a stop? I'm going bop, 
Let it connect. Yes, that's getting better there. We Very have two minutes. Oh, uh, one minute. Uh, okay, and then one last thing that I would like to say is whenever you have these transitions, so for instance, um, this transition into the moderato, don't be afraid to take your time. I feel like you're kind of west through that part, and you can really have more of an operatic voice. Um, so especially when we have the. <laughs> You see, I'm not over rushing to play those notes. I'm taking my time because as an audience member, we want you to cast up um, in mm -hmm. between each other one. You don't want to just one away and then the audience is still trying to catch up from what you did <laughs> previous, right? So mm -hmm. these are the opportunities so you can grab the audience with you and then start <laughs> your trail <laughs> one. With you. Can I just hear that, um, that little transition and that'd be the last thing that we do? So take your time as you fall. D body da 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 dum. Yes, and take your time at the beginning and then rush through. It's kind of like if I had some books and it just fell, it's not gonna fall like automatically. It might just tips a little bit and then it falls and that's how you want to do musically with that mm -hmm. but very good job thank you so much <laughs> thank you muchas gracias daisy thank you very much <laughs> gracias maestro ti también bueno <laughs> bye <laughs> okay. le damos la bienvenida a francisco a francisco a david David Reyes. Um, mientras que David se conecta, me gustaría complementar un poco sobre la doctora Brittany Totter. La doctora Brittany Totter ha actuado en numerosos eventos y festivales de música, incluida conferencias regionales y nacionales como las convenciones de la Asociación Nacional de Flauta de los Estados Unidos, el Festival de Flauta Mid-South y la Convención de Flauta Mid-Atlantic. Igualmente comprometida con la defensa de la educación musical y la participación con la comunidad, la doctora Trotter se desempeña como coordinadora de la competencia de solistas categoría junior para la Asociación Nacional de Flauta de su país, como presidente de publicidad para el consorcio de no música de flauta y coordinadora del programa para Guardians of Sound Hip Hop Orchestra. Uh, Trotter posee un, un bachelor en música, un pregrado en música y un pregrado en música, educación musical de la Universidad del Sur de Mississippi, una maestría en música de la Universidad de Wyoming, y un doctorado y certificado en docencia universitaria de la Universidad de West Virginia. Entonces, bueno, ya está con nosotros eh, David Reyes. Uh, David, also, do you speak English, right? Yes, I can speak English. Okay, great. So the stage is all yours. Thank you. Hello, David. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, teacher. <laughs> so I cannot wait. Why don't you just start off with your piece? Yeah, uh, I'm going to play Nocturne and uh, the Leg Red Scarsando or Philip Gobert.
Very well done. Very nice paper <laughs> at the end. Do you have more or would you like to just talk a little bit about the intro and then we can get into it? Um, I don't know um, if you wanna, but I can play more or just with the uh, first part. Let's talk about the intro a bit and then if we have time, we can do the sketch show because that's mostly technical. Um, so what is your favorite part about playing French music? That's mostly my first, my favorite oh, part. This one. Oh, oh no, um, your favorite thing about playing music in the French um, repertoire. Oh, my favorite thing. I never think about that. So <laughs> one of my favorite thing about playing French repertoire music is that it just gives us so much color and ways to make color. And that is what I look for whenever I am performing or listening or teaching French music because they have this, this nice, and we have to think about um, the painters at that time. Like you have Van Gogh and then De Vite, like so many great painters. And so those were the people that was giving and giving uh, <laughs> and receiving <laughs> inspirations from our yeah. like favorite composers. Yeah, so I can explain. So at the beginning, I wanted to do an exploration of color. And so mm -hmm. I think of colors in different ways for the flute and how to achieve it. So one way is vibrato, of course. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is for me, and we're gonna talk about this extensively, is vowels. Have you ever talked about the different vowels that we can create and well, how that produce a different sound? Mm, yes, I try to do something. <laughs> oh yeah. So at the beginning, I think we need a nice ooh vowel. Yeah. And so can you just play that A flat and just give me the most beautiful ooh you can get okay. Okay. Just hold an A flat for me. Wait. Ooh. Yes. You hear how that just changed the color just automatically, right? Yes, I can. I can think about in colors. It's more gray. I don't yes. know. It's something more dark. Yes, I agree with you. Something like opaque, kind of like a smoky gray color, right? Yeah. Nice. And you want to keep that until we kind of change the chords around, like pick up to measure um, 10, 11, right? Yeah, and that's where we kind of blossom out a little bit. So can you just play that introduction again, having that nice smoky Okay. Like you're just like, you know, you're in Paris and you just see this old man that's smoking the, a cigar and he's just like having the time of his life. I want you to be <laughs> that Parisian man. <laughs> there very <laughs> nice imagery and how it conveys to the audience as well and yes. so one other thing that i want to talk about is slurs and for me whenever i see slurs i think of you know those really big brooms that like shriek across the floor we want to make sure that our air is doing that as well so if we let me share my screen So right here, give me the most coloring and the creeping sensation in this little area there. So we have. Okay. You see how it's a super connected, the shrieping through the air. Okay. Something. Yes, 
in really Make sure that you're pushing right from that G. Push right through that E natural or F flat there. Yes! And look for instances in the music that you can do that, okay? You want to have that nice shrieping sensation because that's just going to get the, the audience from their hearts, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's the same thing for here at 14.2. And so whenever we get to the automato section, let's talk a little bit back here. We can add a little bit more, I call this shimmer in the vibrato, just, just little, shake it a little bit more, just like, you know, glitter. I call it just adding glitter to make it more animated. So the You want to make sure that every note in these triplet passage shake with vibrato. So can we do that slowly? Sorry, teacher, I can understand. Where, oh, where's that? The, um, here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to go slowly and let the vibrato shimmer each note. Let's do that much so you can hear the vibrato on each note. Okay. Yes. And now let's do it a little bit faster, making sure that you keep the vibrato with each note. Nice. A little bit faster now. It takes a lot of energy. Okay. And so I work, let's do it one more time and really make sure that you start it with the vibrato. But make sure that it seems through. Nice. Very well. And when you're, that's going to create that nice animated section to it. Okay. Um, that is, let's do a little bit of the next section. Sorry, what? <laughs> oh, um, do um, the Allegro. Oh, the next yeah. section? Okay. Again, one of those buggers of a session, but yet it's so impressive whenever you hear someone play it and very impressive by you yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> and so what is going to help you have that nice Can we think of it more quietly? So can you play um, just this much? Stop at 51, okay? And play okay. as quietly as you can. And as quiet as we get, it's going to help us with this little technique because it's a lot of fast passage. And then now you want to have a nice little decay, Effie. Bottom, bottom. Be a little bit more hollow with the sound. Let's you try it again. Okay. Yes, that's more hollow. Nice. And then let the air go. Bottom, bottom, buddy. And then back down. Okay. 
Yes, very well done on that session, quite well. And then another thing that we can talk about is the tita ta ta ta, our tongue articulation, right? Do you ever get a little bit tongue tied with it? Are you double tonguing or single tonguing this session? In the just in the first parts, I use simple tonguing, <laughs> and then I try to use double. Ah, so I would, and it's. Yeah, you can go in between. I have done that before. <laughs> I call it like a mismatch. So that's fine. But we want to make sure that our articulation is nice and poignant. The... So can I hear? Okay. You can choose with everyone. Wait, sorry. So I'm just choosing this one right here. And I'm going to play a B flat. And then I'm going to go into that little figure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Why don't we slow it down? Sorry. So. Yes, you maybe you want to. Yes, okay. your articulation hands down so much better. You hear that clarity in the sound? Can you do it a little bit faster? Nice. And so a good practice technique that you can use there is instead of playing a, you can go, um, just um, double tongue the beginning of each note. And that might be a little bit complicated as I'm trying to demonstrate that. And this tongue, every time that you have this little 16 figuration, and then whenever you have this figuration, just do it as da 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 da. So okay. why don't we try that? Oh. A bit. <laughs> I know you can go slower. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yes. And you can hear how it's so much better articulated when we get to that section there. So in, if you don't like that little practice technique, you can choose another one. I know that was very oh, <laughs> overly complicated, right? It's interesting. <laughs> but it really does add that clarification, especially when you get into um, 62. And then you can choose in between those, you know, playing that downbeat and then playing the next measure, just to help with that da, 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 that light tongue, because that's what we want. Okay. Can I try it? Yes. <laughs> something, it's something like this. Yes. <laughs> So you can mix and match it as you are practicing through this um, again. Okay. Because again, we always want to make music, especially when we're learning in solo piece and we're just going through the motions every day, finding a way to um, deconstruct it mm -hmm. and make it our own tone or technique warm up to prepare okay. for it is every, like that is what you want in each solo that you have. Okay. Um, and then as we were getting towards the bottom, I just like to hear this figuration getting into 63, 73, I'm sorry, because I'm very yeah. interested in the way that you are doing your slurs. So it's literally this figuration. <laughs> And I think your sound 
that can be a little bit open. So why don't we do that one more time? Can we slow down? And I'm going to challenge you. I want you to make sure as you're playing that, that your back teeth are not touching, that they're open. What? Sorry, I can't hear. Uh, make sure that your back teeth here okay. are open, that they're not touching as you slur yeah. that passage. Can you do that for me one more time? And yeah. just concentrate on those back molars. Yes! You hear how that has opened the sounds so much? Yeah. So yeah, pay attention to those themes. Because as flute players, and I'm guilty of it as well, I over stress and create tensions in my body when I don't need to, right? Yeah. Um, so think of those ways just to help with those flow in color. So as you are doing this, I think we're out of time. Are we, Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Um, think about the different colors and like um, imagery that you can create to this piece. Oh, we have seven minutes. Okay, let's continue on. So sorry. <laughs> I saw it at like 726. I was like, did I just miss that? <laughs> okay. Uh, can you play the net section for me? Yes, sure. Oh, yeah. What I think is the most, and you can tell me what you think, the most difficult part about this is those large leaps that we have. What yeah. do you find difficult about this section? Uh, for me, uh, is the, the jump, the large yeah. jumps. Exactly. So here is a nice um, practice technique that I love to yeah. do, and just to open up that sound. So let's do the first one at 109 the and then i want you to squat down when you get to that else <laughs> okay i'm going to try what happened to that i know right <laughs> it's true <laughs> and it's one of those things that we are again creating stress and tension in our bodies and once we relax that down and we have no effort but to like you know balance yeah. yourself we got that so can i hear that section one more time and really go and then as you hit that c slowly carry yourself up Again, is I think that you are closing up your throat just slightly when we hit the upper octave because we have a nice mess of fourth and we want to keep it nice and delicate, right? Do you okay. feel like you're closing up your throat just slightly in your upper register? Uh, I, I try to open. Oh, I, I mean, it's every play <laughs> player. <laughs> yeah. I try to do this. Do I achieve it? No. Yes. I'm trying to do it, but sometimes, you know, that happens. Uh, so one thing that I like to do just to help me engage where I'm at, because sometimes I think I'm doing it and then I listen to my recording, I'm just like, that is not happening there, is I <laughs> drop it down an octave. So we have to... And let's do that much. We're going to drop it literally down an octave. Okay. Nice. Now I want you to do that again and go seamlessly between 
playing it as written and then dropping the octave. So for example, this is what you're going to do. Uh, and you're gonna see if you can keep that, don't change anything, keep that same openness, okay? Yes, and that's another way to engage. Are we open or are we like closed? How was that for you? Uh, it's more comfortable. I don't know. It's some something here. Is is different. <laughs> I don't know how to explain, <laughs> but it's, it's different. Yes, and like that is our most comfortable range because when you think about it, that's the range when we first begin playing the flute, right? And we got yeah. very comfortable with that. And then all of a sudden, they threw high notes at us. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, so we did the squat, but there is something else that I want to bring you on with our last three minutes. Um, uh -huh. And I call this um, tree pose for yoga. And so uh -huh. if I can, sorry, with my socks, I don't know if you can see my feet. Can you see it or no? <laughs> no. How about now? Good? Okay, yep. so you're going to, it's literally right at your cusp. So here's my foot, I'm just going to bring it here. Okay. And that's a nice um, practice stance that if I'm feeling very tense, I just play my music in that stance. So why don't we do uh, measure our next, oh, large leap. is right here at 124. Okay. I want you to play this, those two measures right here or three measures while you're in that stance. So we can see first. Oh. Yeah, here. yeah. Here. In tree pose. Cool. Nice. And now I want you to play without standing in that pose. And I want you to hear the difference. What was the difference for you? Something more relaxing. I don't know. Yeah. When you put the to feel in the in the floor, you know, it's more relaxed in the yeah. in the body. I agree with you. And so, just using those different positions, just to engage like where we are tensioning our body and how we can relax, it, it's going to help us open here because we think all of this openness comes from here, and it does mm -hmm. in our throat. But you also need openness from your shoulders, from your um, here, and like from the ground as well. So just making sure yeah. that our entire body is open for the flute, not just here, because okay. any other place can create tension. But, okay. Yes. Oh, very good. <laughs> but thank you so much for experimenting with me today. <laughs> no, thank, thank you, teacher. Thank you to you. It's incredible. I don't know. So do it. We have our next person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay. Bravo, David. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Cotrater. Bueno, vamos a dar la bienvenida a Erika Martínez. Entonces, les voy a... Son separate. Okay, here she is. Eh, Erika, I'm going to be translating for you uh, tonight. Thank you. Um, the stage is yours. Um, hi, I am Erika. Uh, I'm playing 
fantasía sormiño?
do you mind if we stop here? Uh -huh. Si te importa si paras ahí, Eric. No, no hay problema. Beautiful job. Hermoso trabajo, Erika. Gracias. Thank you. So what I would like to work on for this one is character, because this is an opera and there is full of characters. Dice que te, le gustaría trabajar contigo actitud, porque esto es una ópera y está llena de, de, de roles, de caracteres. Mm -hmm. And so at the beginning, the piano player has this grand introduction for us, right? Al principio, el piano tiene esta gran introducción para nosotros. And we have to match that energy um, at the beginning. So can you just play the first part? Y tenemos que igualar esa energía. Entonces, que si puedes tocar la primera parte. Okay. And then gradually go there. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, there. I'd like to hear more of a drum roll in your vibrato. Dice que ahí le gustaría escuchar como el redoblante, el el roll de redoblante, el brrr, no, no sé cómo se llama eso en español. Okay. Sí, pero si sí sabes a qué me refiero. Sí. Okay. ¿Lo hago otra vez? Yes. Um, in your sound after the fermata. Que mucha más intención en tu sonido después de la fermata. Okay. With the tongue. Con la okay. lengua. beginning and then gradually fall down with the um, figure figuration. Eh, que empieza más lenta y gradualmente acelera con la figuración. So for okay. example, okay, okay. Dice que por favor muevas hacia, hacia, hacia esto uh, mientras vas tocando, hacia el final de la cadencia, refiriendo. So, for example. So, more of a. of the piece. Let me share my screen. Maestro, me repite, por favor, que no le escuche. Que van a trabajar en la introducción de la pieza y entonces ella está tratando de compartir pantalla. Ok. So here... Uh... 
Think of that more of a love song. Que pienses eso como una canción de amor. Okay. You try? Inténtalo. And that is when this is the story that I'm going to tell you. Um, oh, sorry, Jesus. Que perfecto. Y entonces dice que ahorita le va, te va a decir una historia. Okay. There is a man and a woman, and the woman is dancing with the man, but all of a sudden, her jealous lover comes right at that moment. Ella está con su amor, y en ese momento llega su amor celoso, y entra en ese momento. Okay. <laughs> um. Oh, <laughs> ah, sorry. Okay. Um, Y dice que ahora la mujer le dice a los dos amantes, no, no peleen, esa no es la respuesta. And have that emotion as you play at the odd tempo, so they... Y que le agregues esa emoción a medida que te vas acercando a la tempo. Ok. Mm. that you lift up as you release the air. En el compás 49 en la ligadura del sol sostenido, creo, no recuerdo si dijo, pero que asegúrate de que levantes la, uh, la cabeza, la, la, la nota, el final de frase. So, for mm -hmm. example, you see how it's... Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to lift in time. It's kind of like a skip. Dice que tienes que levantar la cabeza, pero conservar el tiempo, como una especie de, de, de salto, ¿sí? Okay. muy bien y cómo te sientes haciendo ese salto esa, esa, levantando esa nota en la cabeza eh, da más seguridad para el tiempo yes 
And so <laughs> whenever you have those releases, make sure that you lift like you're skipping somewhere. Y cuando tengas esas, esas eh, espacios, asegúrate de levantar para, como si estuvieras saltando a algún lado. Okay. And now we're getting to the agitato, and I want to hear agitated in your sound. Y que ahorita estamos llegando al agitato y ella quiere escuchar agitado el sonido. Okay. So for example, I have a younger brother who just annoys me. I want you to think of someone that annoys you. Dice que ella tiene un hermano menor que la molesta mucho. Entonces imagínate a alguien que te esté a toda hora molestando. Oh. <laughs> vale. <laughs> to nothing kind of like um my little brother when he ignores me then he gives me the puppy doll eyes like i'm so sorry y que te asegures que al final del, de la frase del diminuendo que hagas un diminuendo a la nada algo así como cuando le hermano oh. se molesta y se mira con ojos de cachorro diciéndole ay lo siento <risa> ok so, ok Okay. Yes. <laughs> so in this first beginning, we did a lot of character changes in this. And that's what you need because you're telling the full, well, not really the full story of the opera, but a scene of the opera. And you have to convey those emotions like an actor would on stage. Dice que al principio de esta introducción eh, tienes que estar pensando mucho en los personajes, porque hay muchos personajes interviniendo y tú tienes que contar una escena de la ópera, ¿sí? Entonces eso es lo más importante. Dice que, que trabaja mucho en eso, en, en los personajes. And so in the romance section, be more romantic in your sound, more of a seductive kind of sound. Que en la sección romántica eh, dice que, que seas más romántica, que seas más seductora con tu sonido. <laughs> no soy romántica. <laughs> <laughs> She's not romantic. <laughs> I'm tired, but we can fake our way through it, right? <laughs> que lo puedes mentir. <laughs> more. Excelente trabajo. So when we have um, this figuration here, you see at the B, you want this note of the eight note to be heavier than the next note. So we have. So you can have that nice dance like fill. Oh, sorry, to repeat, I got interrupted by the, sorry. Oh, no. um, so in the measure that I highlighted, um, so that is beat one, two, three, four, the fifth beat, um, because of that dotted eight, you want to make it heavier and then the 16th next to it, make it lift lighter so we can have that nice dance feeling. Um, ella dice que... Eh... 
va a ser eh, 59 en, en el quinto tiempo donde tiene una, una nota con puntillo que la hagas más pesada y la siguiente nota la hagas un poquito más ligera ok en el 59, ¿sí? 60, perdón. Uh, 59 and 62. 62. Okay. Mm. Mm. Very well. <laughs> Sorry, and then um, another section that I want to go through, and I'm going to come back to the middle section, but my favorite section of this piece is the... Have more of a crisp articulation that it's like a ball bouncing. Da, 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 da. Dice que va a trabajar esta sección que es una de sus secciones favoritas de la obra y que hagas esa articulación más crocante eh, y como balance, como si estuviera rebotando esa palabra, crocante y, y rebotante. Ok. Y que te asegures dónde va a ser tu clímax y dónde te vas a, a, a devolver del clímax. Ok. no lo no no eh, relantices el, el, el rebote <risa> ok la, la, no, que planees el clima eso es lo que ella dijo uh -huh. so going past that point um I want you to take more liberty in this session oh. dice que pasando esa sección eh, que te tome más libertad en lo que viene I want okay. you to pretend that you are a ventriloquist dummy or like a puppet here que pretendas que eres como una marioneta. Yes. So more liberty and more puppet. Eh, más libertad y más marioneta. Mm -hmm. Ahí estás empezando una nueva sección. Okay. So slow down and gradually speed up. So at that point. Que en ese punto eh, 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 relantiza y gradualmente lo aceleres. Porque so, estás empezando una nueva sección. Yeah. So can you um, follow along with me in what time taking time a certain section? Eh, que la sigas, se la escuches y la sigas y mira dónde ella toma tiempo, de, en qué parte de esa sección toma tiempo. So I'm going to start at 140. Va a empezar en el 140. Ok. Ok. Section 
that I ask you to take liberty, those are instances where you can cue the pianist. Dice que muy bien y que todas esas secciones donde te pidió tomar más tiempo que de, debes okay. trabajar en, en darle la entrada al pianista. Because okay. their part is easy. They're just doing a verti bass right over you. Que porque su parte es muy fácil porque ellos están haciendo eh, el bajo al verti en mm -hmm. verti. Entonces que, que darle la entrada. So can you do that session again? And make sure that you cue that downbeat at 144. Eh, repito la sección y asegúrate de dar la entrada en el primer tiempo del compás 144. Ok. Be a little bit excited, excitement in your sound. So I'm being very relaxed here. Oh. Y cuando tengas ese segmento que trata de agregarle más eh, emoción a tu sonido, ¿sí? So, okay. This is relaxed. Esto es relajado. And this is um, excitement. Y lo que sigue es emoción. And then back to relax. Y te devuelves a relajado. Okay. Take your time. Toma tiempo. And that's be like a little nana boo boo at the end. Uh, y ese será el final de la sección. Okay. Emoción. Um, okay. You try. Intentalo, Erika, por favor. Okay. Mm. Take your time there, and you can cue the pianist there, and that just brings more of a humor part. Dice que te tomes el tiempo ahí y que asegúrate de, de darle la entrada al pianista, y eso le, ese cambio de tempos, de velocidades, le va a dar más como sentido humorístico al, a la obra. I think we have, like, I don't know, we don't have more time. Um, oh. and, entonces... Um, Erika, muchas gracias. Thank you, doctor. Gracias, maestro. Thank you, teacher. Gracias. Thank you. <laughs> bueno, uh, thank you very much, doctor Trotter. Oh, thank you. Let me stop sharing my... <laughs> <laughs> um, le vamos a dar la bienvenida a Valentina Suárez. Um, y mientras ella llega, quisiera agradecer públicamente a, al la Universidad Distrital, a la Facultad de Artes ASAP, al equipo de producción en cabeza de, de, de Carlos Mejía y a Daniel Pardo. Quisiera saludar a mi colega, al maestro Julio Noguera, y pues por supuesto invitar a Valentina. Valentina, the stage is yours. Uh, do you need any help with the translation or can you do it by yourself? Sí, profe, por favor. Ok. Ahí está, ya acá para ti. Vale. Eh, bueno, maestro, buenas noches. Yo voy a tocar el concierto para flauta de Rey. She's going to perform the Reina Concerto.
perdón. <risa> eh, y desde ahí muestra qué pena. <risa> We can stop there. I just wanted you to play until E to the big two T. Dice que ella solo quiere que si quieres para ahí, pero puedes tocar en el eh, en el D. Tiempo del D. Did you say D? Oh E. E, perdón. E. But we can stop there and work on something. Okay. Pero que si tú quieres pueden parar ahí y trabajar en algo previamente. Beautiful job. Oh, Hermoso trabajo, Alex. Thank you. So, I feel a big theme um, of today's master classes that I've been talking about is musical storytelling. Dice que ella lo que ha estado trabajando en la master class de hoy es eh, contar historias musicales, contar historias con la música. Um, for me, the great players that I admire can not only play technically in tonally well, but they can convey emotions through their sound and through the music to the audience. Dice que para ella eh, lo que más admira no es tocar solamente técnicamente y, afina, y, y afinado, sino es la capacidad para eh, decir historias y convencer al público. And so with the wine and key, it's actually much more than just a beautiful piece, but it's one of the few pieces in the flute repertoire that's the main concerto that is in the romantic style because we don't have much in our repertoire. Dice que el concierto de Reineke, además de ser una, hora de las, una de las principales horas para flauta, es uno de los principales conciertos románticos escritos para flauta, ya que no tenemos muchos de esos conciertos para flauta románticos en el repertorio. Mm -hmm. So with all of that, what emotions do you want to convey in the beginning of this concerto? ¿Qué tipo de emociones quieres convencer a la gente en el principio de este tipo de concierto? Yo creo que el principio es como muy tranquilo y después adquiere mucho más virtuosismo y más destreza. Uh, she thinks that at the beginning the piece is more tranquil, uh, more calm, and then getting more and more virtuosic. Yes, I agree with that. Ella está de acuerdo. So at the beginning, have more of a tranquil, kind of French repertoire kind of easiness to it. Al principio, eh, sí, al principio trata de tocarlo tranquilo, como a, a la francesa, como el tipo de repertorio francesa, como fácil, como simple. So we have... Can you try that for me? Lo puedes intentar, por favor. Pronounce on the F sharp and B. Sorry, could you repeat the internet? Uh, can you be more pronounced in your articulation on the F sharp and B? Que si puedes pronunciar un poquito más la articulación en el Fa sostenido y si. But keep that tranquil style throughout the opening line. Pero que mantenga siempre el, el, el estilo tranquilo en esa apertura de la obra. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. And that is the move that you're going to set. In the beginning. Y esa es la atmósfera que tú vas a eh, implementar en, en, en el principio. Implementar. So, there are certain places where we really hear a different in um, core changes. And so let me um, share that with you. Hay unas, unas frases en las cuales tienen que ver algunos cambios y ella va a compartir 
Santa ya con, con nosotros. Bueno, con su mamá. So if you can see my screen, um, at the odd tempo and measure 28. Que si miras en la tempo del compás 28. You're going to start at a nice full color. But when we get to the G sharp here at 32, we have two personalities. So we have to like bring that out. So we have. Oh. Dice que en la tempo empieza con un color full. ¿Cierto? Pero que cuando llegues al sol sostenido en el 32, que tenemos que destacar eso. Sorry, it's at the D sharp. Sorry. You're changing tonality. So it's to be a different color there. Can I hear you give an example? Y si lo puedes intentar, que la G sharp sin el sol sostenido, sino el re sostenido. Oh, I'm sorry, can you play that again? My screen froze for a second. Que si puedes tocar otra vez porque se le conectó la pantalla un segundo. Okay. Nice. And then when you get into the um, Poco Salanto, really take your time. Breathe. And then you can go back into that tempo. Dice que muy bien. Y cuando llegues a, a un poco slentando, que le, le que trabajes un poquito el tempo y luego en el atender recuperes el tempo anterior. Okay. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> brief. So here, take a breath here. And that's gonna help you last here. So you won't take that awkward breath. And then when we get here, this is another, at the A right here, we are again changing that tonality. So can I hear, oh, sorry. Dice que tomes una respiración después del, del C, ahí donde está marcado. So take a breath after the B. Uh-huh. One measure before B. And there's a tonality change at measure 41. You hear it with the A, different chord. Y en el A cambies el color. De 41. Bueno, voy a intentar. Very good job. So we hear those different kinds of tonalities there. Oh, sorry. Um, and so when we get to measure 44, um, in order, because I hear that sometime with your technique, you're kind of slowing down on those triplets. Do you find those to be a little bit difficult? 
dicen que en el compás 44 ella siente que estás eh, echando el tiempo para atrás un poquito en los tresillos, que si los tienes es un poquito difícil. O sea, si es un poquito difícil, esta persona te está preguntando. Ah, ok. Sí, 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 es un poquito complejo, la verdad. Yes, it is difficult. <laughs> it was very difficult for me when I first learned this piece. And what helped me was I used a little air kick to eat triplet. Dice que para ella fue muy difícil cuando lo aprendió esos tresillos y lo que ella hizo para, para arreglarlo es como un golpe de aire al principio de cada uno de esos tresillos. So kind of like what I work with with the common, with the air purse, um, at 44, can you just do the grouping, the beginning of each grouping? So we have E, oh, L it. So you're not going to tongue it. You're just going to give a nice ha sound to it. Que como trabajó en el Carmen, que en cada uno de sus eh, eh, notas que señaló, principio de grupo de notas, vas a atacarlo, pero con aire, solo con ha. Ah. Solo las notas, las primeras notas de cada grupo, el mi, el mi, el, oh, el fa. Yeah. Yes, and so you're going to keep that same intensity as you're tonguing with all of the notes, playing it regularly. It's regular, so. You can keep that energy so you're not sí. lagging behind in the tempo. Y dice que mantengas esa intensidad y puedes a, a dar, eh, apoyarte en esos para que no te quedes atrás del tiempo, manteniendo la intensidad en eso ¿no? cuando hagas todo el pasaje. Okay. So in measure 45, are you using the fork fingering for F sharp or are you using the regular fingering? Que si en el compás 45 para el paso sostenido estás tocando con el cuart con el dedo regular o con el tercer tercer dedo con el cuarto dedo. Regular. Um. Que cuál cuál dedo So, of course, we can play F sharp with the last finger, right? But we can also play F sharp with the middle finger. And sometimes I find myself, whenever there is like that technical passage that's go between E to F sharp, I use my fork fingering and kind of stretch between the fork and then the regular fingering. Dice que cuando ella tiene pasajes difíciles, eh, para darle limpieza ella utiliza el, el dedo lo que llamamos el dedo corto con nosotros para tocar el paso sostenido okay. So you can work that out in the practice room in case like and it's just maybe not even all of it I go in between both of those for me Dice que no en todo lo hace ella pero que ella lo utiliza en en el medio, en algunas, como para, para darle limpieza al pasaje. But very, so, the, one, another thing that I want you to do is, at the onomato, can you start at this onomato section? And I really want to hear a difference in your sound um, as we are getting to 61. So can you play from 51 and stop at 61 for me? And be more animated with yourself. Dice que en el animato, eh, ella quiere escuchar 
uh, diferencia, mucha diferencia para llegar a los más 61. Entonces que arranca en el 51, pero que tu sonido sea más animado para llegar al 61. ¿Qué pena, maestro, que no se me así? Ella dice que en el compás 51, en el animato, quieres que sea, haya una diferencia, entonces que sea más animato. Para, entonces que toca, toca eso más animado en tu sonido y que conectes todas las transiciones y el compás 61. section be mindful that this little phrase right here is like more of a piano dynamic than the forte because we want to hear that um difference so can i hear the and then we have crescendo so you're a little bit agitated as your crescendo to here and then you're going to be more peaceful when you get to measure 58. Dice que en el 55 es forte y 56 el que está señalado lo pienses bien para que haya un contraste. En el compás 57 hagas un crescendo, pero en el compás 58 donde está el sol natural simplemente vuelvas al piano. Ah, ok. Yeah, Nice, and then you notice here it's a, such a nice tonal change when we get to that G sharp, and it's super different than that G natural. Dice que eso garantiza el cambio de tonalidad en el sol bemol. So we want to make sure that we exaggerate that different tonality there. Entonces que te asegures de, de exagerar, bueno, diferenciar ese cambio de tonalidad ahí. So while the G natural might be forward in sound, think more backwards in sound when we get to the G sharp. Eh, que, que en el sol natural, cuando es, piensas el sonido hacia adelante, en el sol vemos lo piensas un poquito más hacia atrás para destacar ese cambio de tonalidad. So. Oh. And then you gradually get back forward with the sound after that. Y después de tocar piano de sol bemol, gradualmente vas a llegar, vas a hacer un crescendo hacia hacia el, el, la, la, la dinámica que trae. Esto. Can you try for me? Puedes intentar, por favor. Mm -hmm. Very good job. So be mindful at, of these accents right here. You can, oh, sorry. It's okay. Uh, dice que muy buen trabajo y piense sobre estos acentos que acabo de marcar. You can add a little bit more robot, rubato in those accented notes. Que agregas un poquito más de rubato en esas notas acentuadas. So we have. Ah. And go into the technicals. Y después así entras a, a, los, a la parte técnica. 
Very good job at the rubato. Muy buen trabajo en el rubato. So now we need to plan our crescendo. Y ahora necesitas planear el crescendo. So I think of crescendo from like a level of one to ten. One being piano and ten being fortissimo. Que el crescendo es planearlo como de una escala de uno a diez, donde uno es piano y, y diez es fortissimo. So, for instance, I might think of a five, seven, eight. Oh, sorry, that is not a good eight. And then nine. Here. So, can you um, plan out your crescendo with your level of loudness so we go? Yes. Entonces que planees tu tu crescendo, ella esa es una indicación que ella pues sugiere, eh, pero que la planees con tu nivel de, de dinámica, con tu rango dinámico. Entonces planealo, planealo, pero todo es que hagas un contraste en la dinámica. Okay. Inténtalo. And you can take a breath right after that G sharp. Y que si quieres puedes tomar una respiración después de ese sol sostenido. So you don't have to take that awkward breath right before C, right? Y así no tienes que tomar esa respiración extraña antes de C. We have like two minutes. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to go over, and again, is this more of a make sure that we are stylistic there, is the triplet. <laughs> And make sure that we are using those haws when we get to the accent there. Dice que la última cosa que trabajar es un aspecto estilístico en los tresillos y que te asegure de utilizar las notas ha ahí. And we can add detachment to the note, but make sure that we're not da 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 da. We don't want that smashing staccato. Entonces dice que eh, lo puede agregar pues, acento, pero que no quiere ese staccato aplastante. Can I just hear this much? Que se puede escuchar solamente lo que señaló. Make sure that your vibrato shimmer on your accent because it's making it shorter. Que te asegures que, que tu vibrato eh, eh, concuerde con esas notas acentuadas porque lo está haciendo más, más corto. So we want more of a... You hear the vibrato shimmering through it, right? Que si escuchas tu vibrato destacarse en esas notas acentuadas. Sí. Yeah, but you can make da 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 You can make it shorter. I'm hearing too much connectedness. Go back, to, revert back to where you are, and then just add a shimmer, and then that's to be it. Dice que ella estaba escuchando conexión después de las notas acentuadas, entonces que si puedes separar un poquito el tresillo después de la nota separada. Solo eso y después todo lo demás sin conectar. <laughs> but very well, but 
you're doing exquisite good job on these on this piece and it's a mammoth of a piece as well dice que estás haciendo un excelente trabajo en la obra y que es una pieza pues memorable también entonces I think your next big step is to really figure out where we have these major core change and how you can make this your tone color different. Dice que el siguiente paso es mirar los los cambios armónicos eh, de las de la obra en las secciones y mirar cómo puedes hacer cambiar tu color en cada uno de estos grandes cambios. And pianists do a great job with this with Beethoven because he has so many different harmonic colors with his pieces. Que los pianistas hacen mucho, muy bien esto eh, a través de los Beethoven porque tienen muchos cambios armónicos. And the Wannicke give flute players a job to display those same colors in Beethoven music, but in his music as well, because the late Romantic period. Dice que, que Reineke le da a los flautistas, como lo hace Beethoven con los pianistas, la oportunidad para demostrar estos cambios en color. De la música romántica para, para la música. But thank you so much, Brava. Okay, muchas gracias y que Brava. Um, thank you, Dr. Trotter. Um, it is an honor and a pleasure to have you here uh, at the University of Disney and the Dr. Trotter Arts uh, I would like to invite all the people, the players, for you today to take a picture for the posterity. If you don't mind, so uh, Daniel, puedes dejar entrar a los demás porque a ver si nos vamos una fotito para el recuerdo. Thank you very much. Yay, we are here. So, uh, me gustaría que le diéramos un aplauso a la doctora Trotter por acompañarnos. Thank you very much, Dr. Trotter. Applaus for you. Your Thank doctor. you. Such wonderful performers. Great job, everyone. <laughs> Excelente trabajo, eh, todo el mundo y, y muy buenos intérpretes. So, um, I would like to take a, a picture uh, for the facility. So, do you remember the word I used to say at USM? Please say para engutirme y cuero. Well, this is a picture for the posterity. And one more time, Dr. Trotter, thank you very much. Um, Muchas gracias a ustedes, chicos. Muchas gracias a, a Carlos. Muchas gracias al maestro Julio Noguera que está con nosotros ahí con nuestros comentarios. A Daniel, fantástico trabajo con la producción, al proyecto curricular de artes musicales. Y los esperamos el próximo, déjenme estar seguro, 9 de julio eh, para la maravillosa, eh, maravilloso cierre e intervención de mi colega. Eh, profesor de flauta, el maestro Julio Noguera, quien estará como nuestro último invitado cerrando esta temporada del segundo la virtual flute workshop. Uh, muchas gracias a todos. Thank you very much, Dr. Trotter. Uh, yeah. Hope to bring you here sometime when when uh, reality comes back here to Colombia. Uh, we would love to have you here, and, and, and it will be amazing. So thank you very much to everyone who's watching us. Uh, el, perdón, gracias a todos los que nos están observando y entonces nos vemos en nuestra siguiente sesión. Bravo, thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> And bravo, performers. Great job. <laughs> Excelente.